It was one of the longest running civil wars in Asia that killed a hundred thousand people over a span of nearly three decades and shattered the island nation of Sri Lanka. I'm proud to announce that my government in an unprecedented humanitarian operation finally defeated the LTT militarily. On May 18, 2009, the Sri Lankan government declared its victory over the militant Tamil Tigers. The brutality of the war, I think it was just one of those times where just words cannot capture. Within the Sinhala community, there was a lot of celebration. Their men were coming home, their men were safe, they're not going to die anymore. It was a sense of relief at one level and a sense of enormous guilt at another level. The war that we thought was endless is finally ending, but at what tremendous cost. But after 10 years of fragile peace, the nation's post-war reconciliation remains as elusive as ever. We haven't got into what I would call a post-conflict period in which the roots of conflict are addressed and new sources of conflict are not reproduced or produced. That we have not done. Even as the nation's Tamil minority wait for justice for wartime atrocities, new fault lines emerge after the April 2019 deadly Easter bombings. There is fear among Muslims right now. From the day that the Tamil war is ended, they started telling, now we are done with the Tamils, it's time for the Muslims. Can Sri Lanka's majority make peace with its minorities? Or is the nation fighting a new war that pits one religious community against another? I hope that uh, Sri Lanka will not uh, go back to its dark era again. There are no families who would want to see their children disappear again. Nandikadal, a lagoon over a 14-kilometer stretch in northeast Sri Lanka, bears silent witness to the last stages of a brutal war. It was here that the end came for the liberation tigers of Tamil Elam. And for its leader, Velupilai Prabhakaran. Prabhakaran's two big mistakes was to turn his army into a conventional army and trying to fight a conventional war when his strength was really to fight a guerrilla war. That was mistake number one. And mistake number two was to misread the definition of uh, terrorism or misread the Western nation's intention to end terrorism post 9-11. The world had moved on but he was still living in the, in the past. During the last days of war, Scores were trapped in between two vicious warring forces, the LTTE and the Sri Lankan army. Nearly 300,000 civilians took the perilous journey to cross over from the LTTE-held areas into government control. Senda Milini was only 24 years old when she lost six of her family members during the final days of war.
After burying her six deceased family members, Sendha Milini walked with her husband and child to Nandikadal when her husband was hit by a bomb, maiming him for life. If a husband is a child, he is a child. 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 He is a With her child perched firmly on her shoulders, Sentha Milani and her injured husband waded chest high across the Nandi Karal waters, teeming with dead bodies and blood. Today, she runs a fruit juice shop across the bridge overlooking Nandikadal, from where she escaped the wrath of fighting forces ten years ago. The memories of last days remain fresh in her mind and the wounds unhealed. <laughs> On May 18, 2009, the government declared their decisive victory over the LTTE. I'm proud to announce that my government, in an unprecedented humanitarian operation, finally defeated the LTT militarily. The Sri Lankan army outmaneuvered one of the world's most ruthless insurgent groups, the Tamil Tigers, who battled fiercely for the creation of a separate Tamil state. Both the Tamil Tigers and the Sri Lankan security forces committed mass atrocities over the course of the war that killed over a hundred thousand people. According to a UN estimate, around 30,000 people were killed during the last days of war, while countless thousands are still reported missing. The narrative about uh, 30,000 civilians being killed in the final assault I think is uh, exaggerated. There would have been collateral damage, but the LTT is also to be equally blamed because they kept taking the civilians back with them as hostages as they kept retreating into a kind of a dead end. Uh, and uh, whoever was there and when the Sri Lankan military opened uh, full and final assault, they would have uh, obviously killed many of those uh, civilians who were caught in that crossfire. I still will talk with pain. It's a matter of unresolved. We have seen our friends dying. The issue is whether war was necessary uh, to deal with the ethnic conflict. And well, in, a, in a small population like Sri Lanka, whether we could uh, lose such lives. The 26-year bloody conflict had Sri Lanka divided along ethnic lines, with tensions between the Tamil minority and the ruling Sinhalese majority. But 10 years after the end of the brutal conflict, ethnic polarization still persists. For the minorities living in the north and east, the war has never quite ended. In terms of the relationship between the single majority community and the minorities, you know, we have ended a war and so we have got into a post-war period. But we haven't got into what I would call a post-conflict period in which the roots of conflict are addressed and new sources of conflict are not reproduced or produced. That we have not done. For ex-LTTE cadres who hold Prabhakaran in high esteem, life is still a battle and the social stigma as former tigers remains.
சில நாடு பயங்கரவாதி என்று சொல்லுது சில நாடு போராளி என்று சொல்லி சொல்கிறத விட பயங்கரவாதி என்று தலைவர் என்று சொல்கிறான் கூட இருக்குது உண்மையில் என்ன பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் ஒரு சிறந்த போர் வீரருக்கு அப்பால் மிக சிறந்த ஒரு பண்புள்ள ஒரு மனிதன் என்றால் எங்களுடைய எப்படி சொல்கிறேன் நாங்கள் தவிர பழைய காலங்களை வச்சு பார்க்கும்போது மிக இரக்கம் உள்ள பண்புள்ள ஒரு நீதிமான இடத்தை நாங்கள் சொல்ல வேணும் நிறைய இழப்புகளை சந்திச்சிட்டோம் அப்போ பின்னோக்கி போகக்கூடாது ஓரளவு மனசை கல்லாக்கி கொண்டு தான் உண்மையில் நாங்கள் போராட்டம் செய்து நாங்கள் தியாகராஜா ஜாயின் எல்டிடிஇ வென் ஹீ வாஸ் ஓன்லி செவன்டீன் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் ஹீ பிகேம் அன் ஆஃபிசர் வித் தி எல்டிடிஇஸ் நேவல் விங் தி சி டைகர்ஸ் அரெஸ்டட் டியூரிங் த வார் ஹீ ஸ்பெண்ட் டைம் இன் அ ப்ரிசன் இன் இந்தியா returning only when the war ended in 2009 former LTTE fighters like him find themselves shortchanged by successive governments that promised rehabilitation ellarume kaidu seya saranadaiye chuli saranadaindu punarval valikkapattu vandhalum ilangeyarasu avargala samugathoda seethirukkira manachirukkira endru solludu aanal samugathoda inaichu pottum சமூகத்துக்கும் இந்த போராளிகளுக்கும் இடையில ஒரு உறவு ஏற்படாத அளவுக்கு அவையில் சில செயல்பாடு அரச இராணுவத்தை சொல்ல வரையில் அரச அதிகாரிகளால் அது உருவாக்கப்பட்டு கொண்டிருக்கு எங்களுக்கு யாருமே உதவி செய்யாமல் எங்களோட வாழ்வாரத்தை நாங்களே கொண்டு செல்லலாம்னு சொன்னால் எங்கள்கிட்ட என் எங்கள்கிட்ட என்ற ஒரு முதலீடு எதுவுமே இல்லை எல்லாத்தையும் அழிஞ்சிட்டான் எல்லாத்தையும் இழந்துட்டான் ஆனபடியால் அரசாங்கம் இவ்வளத்தையும் செய்து யுத்தத்தை முடிச்சு அரசாங்கத்தால் ஏன் எங்களை முன்னுக்கு கொண்டு வர முடியாது இன்றைக்கு நாங்கள் வந்து சம் சமூகத்தோடு இணைஞ்சு வாழ விரும்புகிறோம் ஏன்னா இலங்கை தான் எங்களுக்கு சொந்த நாடு அப்போ இலங்கையில் ஜனாதிபதியாக வாரவரும் இலங்கை அரசு வந்து எங்களை மற்ற மக்கள் போல் எங்களையும் சமூக ரீதியாக முன்னுக்கு கொண்டு வர வேணும் ஒரு கடன் அடிப்படையில் கூட புனர்வாழ்வு அதிகாரி வந்து சொல்கிறேன் உங்களுக்கு நாங்கள் ஒரு தொகை லோன் தரோம் நீங்கள் சுய தொழில் செய்யுங்க ஆனால் எல்லாம் ஒன்றுமே தேவையில்லைன்னு வாங்க பேங்க்கு போனால் அரசு உத்தியோகத்தை கொண்டு வாங்க எங்களை நம்பி அரசு உத்தியோகத்தை ட்ரெயின் வைக்க மாட்டான் ஏன் நீங்கள் அப்படி பார்க்குறீங்க நாங்கள் எங்களை கொண்டு போனீங்க எங்களுடைய அனைத்து பதிவுமே உங்கள்கிட்ட இருக்குது அதை வச்சு கொண்டு நீங்கள் எங்களை வளர்க்குறதுக்கோ இல்லை எங்களை முன்னுக்கு கொண்டு வர்றதுக்கோ உங்கள்கிட்ட எந்த ஒரு முயற்சி இருக்கிற மாதிரி தெரியாது Even 10 years after the end of Sri Lanka's armed conflict, no justice is in sight for wartime atrocities. Failed political reforms, inadequate economic growth, and heavy militarization of the north have deepened the Tamil population's grievances. 10 years on, you know, you reflect back and you realize so many questions are still unanswered. so many people are still displaced so many are unable to go home so many don't know what happened to their loved ones so there are many questions really what kind of peace is in sri lanka at this moment It's another hectic day for the women at Amachi restaurant in the little town of Kilinochi in northern Sri Lanka. The town was the de facto capital of the rebel LTTE before it was captured by the Sri Lankan army in January 2009. A crucial moment in the nation's history that led to the fall of the rebels but not before claiming colossal human costs. Vasanthi's son was picked up and recruited by the LTTE, forced to fight a war that he did not sign up for. He died just 31 days after being forcibly enlisted. அப்ப 
Nalini was only 10 years old when she witnessed her whole family killed right in front of her eyes. The wounds of war remain raw and unhealed. But from these stories of agony and heartbreak emerge stories of courage and resilience. Amachi stands as a symbol of endurance in the face of horrendous tragedy. <laughs> Started as a women's collective in 2016 and managed by the Department of Agriculture, the initiative assists poverty-stricken female-led households affected by the war. Working in two shifts, these women pay a small fee to rent a stall. They bring their own ingredients, decide what they will cook, and keep all the money they earn by selling their food. But the story of Amachi is an aberration in a war-stricken land where a long list of grievances of minority Tamils persist. Though some progress has been made in resettlement and rehabilitation, much remains to be done as war-affected communities in the north and east continue to wait for justice and reparations. Defeating terrorism is not an excuse for violations having taken place. So I think it's very important to see a process that really is independent but also addresses the grievances of tens of thousands of people affected. We engulfed the Tamil community with continuous surveillance. Uh, their land was not given back. We recreated the same modalities, creating a highly militarized zones. In the humanitarian war, the Tamil people were released from the fetters of LTT to another militarized option. They had no option. The consequences of the war on all communities, Sinhalese, Muslims, uh, Tamils, had not yet been addressed, particularly in terms of communities whose lands are still occupied by the, the military. So I think there is a long way to go 10 years after the war in terms of reconciliation. It's Sri Lanka's longest-running roadside protest. For nearly three years now, the war-displaced residents of Kepa Pulava in northern Sri Lanka have been demanding the release of all military-held lands to their rightful owners. Most of the public amenities, including drinking water wells, school and even burial grounds are within the lands under military occupation. நாங்கள் <laughs> 
கொடிய வெயிலிலும் கொடும் மழையிலும் கடும் குளிரிலும் இந்த விச சந்துக்கள் மத்தியிலும் இந்த போராட்டத்தை இந்த குஞ்சு குழந்தைகளோடு நீதியான நியாயமான போராட்டத்தை கேட்கும் நாங்கள் வந்து பள்ளம்புட்டியில் போன கிழவல் ரோட்டில் வாழ்ந்த நாங்கள் சந்தோஷமான வாழ்க்கையை வாழ்ந்தோம் ஏனென்றா என் கணவன் இருந்த என் பிள்ளை இருந்த என் நிலம் இருந்தது எந்த நிலத்தில் வேற மரஞ்செடியில் உள்ள காய்கறி அப்படி இங்கே சாப்பிட்டு கொண்டிருந்தோம் அப்போ எங்களுக்கு சந்தோஷமாக இருந்தது இன்றைக்கு பிள்ளை இல்லை கணவன் இல்லை நிலம் இல்லை அப்போ எப்படி நீங்கள் எந்த அபிவிருத்தியை செய்த என்ன எங்களுக்கு என்ன என்னத்தை செய்த என்ன சந்தோஷத்தை எங்களுக்கு உண்டு பண்ணுறது இப்படி தொடர்ச்சியாக நாங்கள் தெரு ஓரத்தில் இரவு பகலாக போராட்டம் செய்ய நாங்கள் கதைக்கிற கதைகளும் இன்றைக்கு பிள்ளைகளை வன்முறையில் தூண்டுது Some of the residents of Kepa Pulava have been resettled in what's called a model town. But not many are happy about this arrangement. Definitely not Sandra Leela. இது முகாம் தான் இது ஒரு இதில் வந்து ஒரு கோழி வளர்க்க இயலாது ஒரு ஆடோ மாடோ வளர்க்க இயலாது ஒரு காணி தான் இது மற்ற இங்கே வந்து கலாச்சார சீர்கேடு இது வந்து ஒரு முகாம் முகாம் என்றால் இங்கே எல்லா விதமான மக்களும் இருக்கின அப்போ பிள்ளைகளை ஒரு படிப்பு பாடசாலைக்கு நல்ல பழக்க வழக்கம் பழக்க இயலாது பாடசாலை பிள்ளைகள் பாடசாலையில் வந்து படிக்க இயலாம் நிலப்பாடு இது ஒரு முகாம் முகாம் நாங்கள் இன்றைக்கு வந்து அகதிகளாக எங்கட நாட்டுக்குள்ளே நாங்கள் இன்றைக்கு அகதி வாழ்க்கை தான் வாழ வேண்டிய நிலைக்கு தான் இந்த கேப்பாப்பில மக்கள் இருக்குது Amidst conflicting numbers, it is difficult to ascertain how much land has actually been returned to their rightful owners and how many households have successfully been resettled. According to activists, the government has not released lands required to adequately resettle all the current displaced people. We have obligation to give their lands back to their real owners. It is the, it is the re reality. So we are for it. But only thing there are now certain places we have to retain due to security reasons. Up to now, we have released almost 85, closer to 90% of the land that we held uh, during in, up in 2009. Some of it has been released in uh, end of 2017, but there's a particular part that is very fertile, which is the one part that provides them access to the lagoon to do fishing, which is the part that has an ancient uh, church, a Hindu temple, and a cemetery, uh, which is still occupied by the army. Government says 90% or 95% of private land has been returned. I don't agree that it is as high as 90 or 95%, but certainly it's more than 60, 65, 70%, uh, which is a huge uh, uh, progress when you consider that in 2013, the Rajapaksa regime said, that's it, no, nothing more. A report by the Human Rights Watch views military occupation of land to be among the primary contributors to continuing displacement. There are also allegations that the lands of the displaced are being used for non-military purposes, such as large-scale property development, agriculture, tourism, and other commercial ventures. We had, not now, because army was... Uh I mean, it has been uh, I mean, occupied these areas for a long time. We have been here for the last 20, 25, 30, almost 30 years. So gradually it happens. People have their we for our requirement. We used to have our canteens, uh, small, small uh, shops like things for our requirements. Those things are going on. Now we have reduced almost all the uh, such places. One thing that hasn't changed much in 10 years in the north and east of Sri Lanka is the continuing military presence and control. In 2014, it was estimated that 160,000 soldiers were stationed in the north. That's one army official for every six civilians. According to government figures, as of 2017, nearly 40,000 people remained internally displaced in the country, a majority from Jaffna. The justification is according to the defense and uh, security establishment. 
they say we have to keep a strong army in order to uh, contain the potential forces of separatism. In view of the fact that he tendered a war and has to keep constant security preparedness, there is a justification. There is a concern because of the diaspora. If there was no diaspora, much of it would have been taken away. Then the question we have to ask ourselves is whose security are you looking at? Are you looking at the security of the people living in the north? Are you afraid that the LTT would come back? If you are afraid that the LTT would come back, then LTT is no more. We have wiped them out. This is one of the unresolved thorny issues which can be resolved if only there was political will. Security is to be ensured in different ways. You don't need to be occupying so much land. Their land was taken over at the time of the conflict, supposedly uh, for security purposes. But 10 years on, when, when you have, you have uh, still military occupying private lands with no clear security reason, and then you see it being used for commercial purposes or non-security purposes, that must hurt. Sri Lankan government has been slow in releasing military occupied lands back to their rightful owners. But even in instances where people returned to their lands, the families did not receive proper resettlement assistance. A package that includes cash for food and land clearance as well as housing and livelihood aid. Nivedika left her ancestral land in the height of war and returned recently after 27 years. Nivedika has been forced to reconstruct her life and home with little support from the government. In 2015, President Maitripala Sirisena came to power on a platform of reform and on the promise of reconciliation. But four years later, it is a failed promise. And like the previous Rajapaksha regime, this government too has refused to acknowledge or address the root cause of conflict. It can be a lack of political will and the Office on Reparations. That's supposed to look into memorialization, about compensation, about recommending uh, who will be able to provide them with um, welfare and things like that, but also things like acknowledgement, which the government has not done and any government hasn't done so those are things that uh, the government needs to take seriously because transition justice only works if it's delivered as a package <laughs> what is a fact in Sri Lanka is that Tamils have been discriminated and oppressed for many decades ever since independence. The first law that we passed after independence in Sri Lanka was to disenfranchise the Tamil community in the hill countries. That's a shameful act that we can't be, we should be shameful till today. And that kind of oppression has continued. The riots against Tamils in 1958, the 1970s, the single only act. So they all have been the standardization scheme on education, all acts that have discriminated Tamils. The post-conflict period continues to impose hardships on women who have been marginalized during the transitional justice process. The Office on Missing Persons is a key body established to search and trace people who disappeared during the war. Around 16 to 20,000 people are estimated to have gone missing. The Office of Missing Persons made an interim report to the President 
making various suggestions, all of which I thought were very, very valuable and useful. If those people are not alive, the truth must be ascertained with regard to how they came by their deaths. That's one thing. But equally important is to enable those families now to move on in life without the breadwinner uh, with them. So this, both of these justice uh, as well as sustainability for the family members must be taken, you know, together. Protests over disappearances, led almost entirely by women, are the longest running. These women want to know where their disappeared relatives are and what happened to them. In May 2009, Balanandani's husband, an LTTE aide, was taken away by the army, interrogated, beaten and subsequently sent to detention camps. In the past, there are many people who are not able to get the money. There are many people who are not able to get the money. There are many people who are not able to get the money. There are many people who are not able to get the There was the complete flagrant violation of human rights. There was what was called a white van culture through which people were abducted and disappeared. In broad daylight, you go in a white van, forcibly take them. Some of them are then never returned. Others are beaten up badly and dropped on the wayside. And that's what happens. It's basically brute force. People were doing it with absolute impunity. There were others who were surrendered to the army on the last days of the war. Their family members saw them, some neighbors and ordinary public saw them surrendering to the army. That was in May 2009, until today we've not heard of them. What happened to them, whether they are dead or alive, and what the army did to them. The white van becoming a symbol of, became a symbol of disappearances in Sri Lanka. You know, it has been a very slow process of recovery from that war devastation. The physical infrastructure is one thing, but uh, how that has affected people uh, and their sentiments, uh, uh, that I don't know whether it will ever be repaired. After 2015, we put in place with the new government measures for reconciliation. Through this process of transitional justice, our complaint constantly was that government was not uh, implementing these things speedily enough. Once you set up the commission, why is not the government having the political will to enable the commissions to work? We have appointed a missing persons commission. We have, we have appointed a reparation commission. Here are the four pillars of transitional justice. Tick the box, tick the box to appease uh, the UN, to appease the international community to, to do certain things. So it seems as if we are creating big boxes like commissions and there is nothing inside. It's empty and there is no political will to resolve the actual question. Sri Lanka has a history of struggling with sectarian violence. It is predominantly Buddhist who make up around 70% of the total population of 22 million, while Hindus are the largest minority at 12% and Muslims 10%. The discriminatory Sinhala only act passed in the 50s by the then government triggered violence, slowly escalating to the civil war. Initially, Tamil-speaking Muslims sided with the struggle, but soon that changed when Muslims opposed the fight for a separate Tamil state. All communities have suffered during the war, and we must particularly think of the Muslims also at this moment, because in a way, during the war, in the context of the war, the Muslims uh, really suffered. So we need to pay special attention to the, the challenges Muslims have been facing to resettle in their own lands, to find housing, etc. In October 1990, Muslims in the north were expelled by the LTTE in an act of ethnic cleansing. Today, as one of those who has returned since the expulsion, Siraj claims that the Muslims are being discriminated against by the local Tamil leaders and government officers. <laughs> Nangal Sulla Sulla Varavisim, Engle, 
எங்களுக்கு நீங்கள் உதவி செய்யாட்டியும் பரவாயில்லை இங்கே உள்ள கவர்மெண்ட் ஆஃபீஸியல் எங்களை இந்த எங்களோட மண்ணில் எங்களை நிம்மதியாக வாழ விடுங்க நாங்கள் ஏதாவது உழைச்சு அதாவது நாங்கள் சாப்பிட்டு கொள்றோம் இந்த யுத்தத்தின் படு எங்களோட முழு முழு நாட்டையும் பாதிச்சது அப்படி அந்த பெரும்பான்மை சமூகம் சிறுபான்மை சமூகத்தை நெருக்கினத்தால் இந்த வடு வந்த வடு இந்த தமிழ் மக்களுக்கு இருக்குதானே அவங்கள்ட்ட நாங்க முஸ்லிம்கள் சிறுபான்மையினர் தானே அந்த வலியையும் வேதனையும் சுமந்தவங்க இன்னொரு சிறுபான்மையினர் அப்படி செய்யலாமா எங்களுக்கு எங்கேயுமே வாழ இல்லாது புத்தகத்துல புத்தகத்துக்கு போனா நாங்க இன்னொரு கேம்ப்ல இங்க இங்க இருந்தாலும் ஓரளவு எங்களுக்கு மன நிம்மதி சொன்னா எங்களோட மண்ணில் எங்களோட சொந்த நிலத்திலே இருக்கிறோம் அங்க போனால் இன்னும் ஒரு இழிவான ஒரு பேரோட அகதி என்ற ஒரு அந்தஸ்தோட நாங்கள் அங்க வாழணும் உண்மையிலே எனக்கு துப்புரவாக விருப்பம் இல்லை புத்தகத்துல போய் அகதி என்ற ஒரு பேரோட மீண்டும் வாழ்றதுக்கு நான் செத்தாலும் இந்த ஊர்ல என்ன இந்த ஊர்வாசியாகவே திறக்கணும் நான் ஆசைப்படுறேன் With the war affected communities facing prolonged delays in getting appropriate reparations, the root of the ongoing conflict remains unaddressed. The toxic nature of Sinhala Buddhist nationalism that continues to rip and weaken the social fabric. I think the many other issues among the minorities have been resolved. All, all reports have been to that issue. I, I don't think uh, it's otherwise. Is there discrimination? Yes, there is discrimination not just against ethnic and religious minorities. There is discrimination against dissenting views even in the Sinhalese majority. There is discrimination against uh, human rights defenders. There is harassment and vilification. So different levels of discrimination and different levels of targeting now online as well this is a very divided very polarized country and very uh, distrustful of each other On April 21st, 2019, when peaceful crowds congregated for worship on Easter Sunday, a string of explosions recalled Sri Lanka's violent past. Nine suicide bombers set off a chain of synchronized bomb blasts across the nation, killing over 250 people. the war wounded island nation once riven by ethnic conflict was now the target for islamist terrorism setta uyiloda irukkala innum theriyadhu aalana veetukku thirumbi vandha vandilla the horrors that ended in 2009 with the fall of the LTTE had now returned with a deadly vengeance ruining a decade of peace in Sri Lanka and deepening the nation's ethnic and religious fault lines the government will continue its uh, policy of having uh, unity in the country and of having religious groups getting together while cracking down on the global terrorism but there certainly has been a big improvement in the country's relations between the different communities and different religions but the prime minister's claim proved contrary to fact eating ai apen hand meka bauthara kadda kiya meka bauthara ta firebrand monk nyanasara uses hate speech against muslims and stokes hostility towards sri lanka's ethnic minorities he recently called for the creation of a sinhalese government german maru hadagatta germany e gollanta kela wenama law ekak wenama neetiyak wenama sanskrutiyak wenama aahara sanskrutiyak wenama sistaacharayak thiyena itali kaare hadagatta italiya जपान कार्य हदागत जपान है उदाहरण की प्याक ये वाके सिंहलयन हदागत राठा थमाई सिंहलराठा 
In the aftermath of the horrific Easter bombings, nine ministers and two provincial governors, all Muslims, were forced to resign by Nyanasara and other hardline Buddhist monks. What is happening today is that innocent Muslims are at the receiving end. They have become victims today. This situation cannot continue further. This peril in which our people are suffering has got to be brought to an end. What has happened after April 21st is the Muslim community who make up 10% of our population, who are scattered all over the country, they are not concentrated in any one area. So they have been seen and vilified collectively as, as uh, the enemy. This is wrong. ंग <laughs> क्वार्टर्स <laughs> can be allowed which disturbs the lives of the people in may 2019 a series of organized attacks on sri lanka's muslim community reverberated across kurunegala town situated around 100 kilometers from colombo angry mobs ransacked mosques and torched the homes and shops of muslims அதுபோற அடிச்சிட்டு ஒரு ரெண்டு ஒரு கோட்டஸ் போயிட்டான அதுபோற இன்னும் மொத்த ஒரு கட்டே மாந்த அடிச்சான் மூணாவது அடிச்சிட்டு போன போறத மந்து கடைசியா தீய வெச்சிட்டாங்க அப்ப எங்களுக்கு வந்து கோல மாறி இல்ல அதுபோற நான் அந்த கார் எடுக்க சென்ன வர சென்ன அவசரமா கொஞ்சம் வாங்க என்ன வைப்பு மீக்குற நெருப்பு வெச்சிட்டாங்க அவங்க எடுத்து லோணும் உதவி பண்ண வாங்கண்ட அதுபோற இங்க தேங்க மோலாலி வந்து ஃபோல் பண்ண அவரே கூப்பிட்ட நீ கொரோடு நான் பார்ன அப்படி அதுபோற அவர் கொரோட்ட ரவட்ட சத்த கேட்டிட்டு நான் வந்து அதுபோற வந்து வைப்ப அவங்க எடுத்து கொண்டு வந்து ஆமி வந்தாங்க போலீஸ் சொல்ல வந்தாங்க அப்புறம் சத்தம் போட்ட போலீஸ் நீங்களே இங்க நீந்து வேல இல்ல எங்கள பணம் எடுத்து நீங்க வாழ்றீங்க இதுல உதவி வந்து நீங்க எங்களுக்கு செய்யல இதெல்லாம் அடிக்கிறது நீங்களே பிளான் பண்ணி செஞ்சவே இல்ல அப்படி என்ன நான் கொஞ்சம் சத்தம் போட்டேன் Safwan a small scale businessman saw a huge mob of around 200 people who were allegedly instigated by Buddhist hardliners to attack Muslim establishments His shop was hit hard by the riots. He was able to save his family from the raging fire, but unfortunately not his business. A in the area la da adichinu vandathu. A endathukku da inda vayambele fell lost. Enanda 5 kodi 80 lakhino lost. Enanda ellam wholesale thane ellam idru item rice cooker and gas adupu The violence escalated soon, spreading to nearby villages. The mobs moved from one village to the next, attacking homes and property. The Paymuna did not have a sample. A pandeki would have been checked them. Our Sarakala sat them in them, poor to turn the Engel Lari and Verity Day, Army, Police. अवेजी <laughs> law and order law and order is the last thing 
that this government had addressed. Nowadays, Makkalukulla mark prachina da. Makkalunna adi tuition solvanga. Muslimgal ali kono, Muslimgal da porla adi illa mark kono. Muslimgal baala uda kuda adi. Amanda naad inda abhipraya thila tha idhi chenji kram. Muslimgal naal munne ra kuda adi. Andevita. For 26 long years, Asia's oldest democracy was paralyzed by a savage civil war between government forces and militant Tamil Tigers. Now, it stands perilously exposed to a very different beast. As a citizen, I feel I've been here before. I lived through the 26 years of civil war but I would like to remain idealistic amid so much despair. Because if all of us give up, because our politicians are not really serving the public interest, and if we as citizens don't at least try to find some way forward collectively, we are not going to see the end of this. I think any form of nationalism that excludes others is dangerous, whether it's Sinhalese nationalism or Tamil nationalism or Muslim nationalism. It's dangerous if it excludes others. And in Sri Lanka, I think it's very important to acknowledge that we are different nations, we are different peoples. There are Sinhala peoples, there are Tamil peoples, there are Muslim peoples, there are Burger peoples, then there are the indigenous communities. We are all very different. And I think we need to come to a situation where we acknowledge the differences, we tolerate the differences, and we even appreciate and celebrate the differences. Sadly, we are far from that. I hope that uh, Sri Lanka will not uh, go back to its dark era again. This is not a fight for my right as a Sinhalese or the Tamil rights or Muslim rights. We are talking about the country where we were born and this country should be the refuge for all of us. That's my hope. There are no mothers to give uh, children to the war. There are no families who would want to see their children disappear again in Sri Lanka. With little action on promised justice and reforms, there is growing despair among war-affected communities. The transitional justice process has been agonizingly slow, with no comprehensive reparation schemes or victim assistance that can support livelihoods. For those who survived the brutal civil war, it's a long wait for closure, justice, and reconciliation. Singhala and Sangha Mandi, in the President Mandaram, Samler has never been a Sindhana, and the Rikumori Sindhana Daniel. Edeme, Edeme, Samler Halaka, Sayan de Padle, Ille, Ang Tangal Tangal, and the Sangha Matinda Nanga, Pakranga, the Kendra Sangha Mandan, Samler, and then Name Vermander. Sunday, I'm at the end of the day, I'm going to come to my mother.